Uh, welcome back for the third large segment of uh, Tech 2020 online. We starting the day with the first talk by Eric Maxwin from Overleaf, giving us an overview of how Tech Live releases make their way into Overleaf. Hello everyone, my name is Eric McSween. I'm a software developer at Overleaf, coming to you from Montreal in Canada. Um, I've been taking care of the 2018 and 2019 Tech Live releases, uh, and I'm, I'm currently working on the 2020 release. Um, today, I'll talk about what we go through to make uh, the Tech Live releases available and how we try not to disrupt anyone's work in the process. So, all right, let's start. Overleaf is a collaborative online editor for LaTeX. It has plenty of features like allowing two or more people to edit a document at the same time, but today we'll focus on a very important feature, compiling LaTeX code. Working on Overleaf is a bit like working on your personal workstation. You edit your text in the editor on the left side of the window, and when you're ready, you hit the compile button to preview the result on the right side. Your LaTeX code can be split into multiple files and you may have supporting materials such as images, bib files, fonts, maybe some additional LaTeX libraries. We'll call this set of files a project. So let's dive a little bit into what happens when you hit the compile button. When you hit the compile button, a request to compile your document is sent to an overly server through the internet. When the server receives a request, it first fetches your project's files from a database. Then it runs LaTeX make inside a Docker container. You can think of a container as an isolated environment for running programs. Programs running in a container are unaware of anything running outside of the container, be it directly on the server or inside other containers. They also have their own file system, which means that programs inside the container can't see or write to files that are accessible outside the container, and vice versa, programs running outside the container can't see or write to the files that are accessible from inside the container. So LaTeX make runs inside this isolated environment and eventually finishes, producing a PDF file. This PDF file is then sent back to your computer to be displayed on the right side of your screen. So this is a sketch of what happens. There are many actual HTTP requests and responses to coordinate all of this, but uh, that gives us an idea. Now let's go back to that container running LaTeX make. As we've just seen, this container has its own isolated file system, just like if it had its own disk. When the container starts running LaTeX make, it doesn't start with an empty file system. The initial file system already contains a bunch of files that you would usually find on a workstation running LaTeX. There's the Ubuntu operating system, there's TechLive itself, there's R, which is a software for statistics and producing graphs that can be used along with LaTeX. Uh, we also add some additional fonts and some configuration. And finally, of course, there's the project files that need to be compiled. All these files, except for the project files, are always the same, so they can be prepared in advance. At the time a compilation is requested, these files are available and ready to use in what's called an image. So the only thing we need to do is create a file system from that image and add the project files. Both of these are quick operations. So this brings us to the first thing we need to do when preparing a new tech live release for Overleaf, which is building that image. We start with the latest Ubuntu long-term support release. Uh, these are released every two years, but are supported for five years. So we're more likely to be able to easily update a buggy package uh, if necessary. And the latest uh, is Ubuntu 2004, uh, which was released in 2020 and will come with our TechLive 2020 image. Our TechLive 2018 and 2019 images came with Ubuntu 18.04, released in 2018. After that, we install TechLive uh, using the installer available on tug.org. 
We install the full scheme, which also installs all available tech packages. Because these packages come from CTAN, the Comprehensive Tech Archive Network, and are updated throughout the year, we don't get a predictable version of these packages, but the version that happens to be available when we build the image. I'll come back to that later. After that, we install R, which again is a statistics and uh, graphics software used along with LaTeX by many of our users. We also install a wide selection of R packages from CRAN. This one is the comprehensive R archive network. So just like for tech packages, the versions of R packages are, that get installed are the versions that happen to be available at the time we build the image. We also install most of the TrueType and OpenType fonts available on Ubuntu that are not also distributed with TechLive. TechLive comes with many fonts, but there are others that are available on Ubuntu and we install them as a convenience for our users. Finally, we add some configuration. For example, we add some LaTeX Make configuration to support NITR, a program that compiles R and LaTeX code together to generate a document. Uh, there are also configurations to support other utilities and in gen general just to make things work. Now, as I said at the beginning of this presentation, we want to avoid causing problems for our users as much as possible. One thing we can do is test the image and try to catch problems and bugs before we make it available. Sometimes we make mistakes when preparing the image, but there are also many differences between two tech live releases that are not necessarily backwards compatible. Some differences change how the resulting document looks, for example, changing where elements are positioned or how much spacing there is between things. Some other differences will result in compile errors in the document that compiled fine without errors before. So we need a diversified set of documents that we can try compiling and see if they work with the new image. Well, luckily for us, Overleaf just happens to have just that. There's a gallery of templates that users can use as a starting point for a new project. Here's an example. Most templates are contributed by users. Universities, for example, will publish their thesis templates on Overleaf for students to start with. We also have created templates for common types of documents or to show off some features of LaTeX. The gallery currently contains around 6,000 templates, and since they're used as a starting point for other documents, we review the templates before adding them to the gallery and we expect them to compile without errors. That's what makes them good benchmarks for our new image. So testing the image amounts to running the compiler the same way it's run for real projects, but on every template available on Overleaf. Let's say we're testing the image for TechLive 2019. For each template, we create a container with the image for TechLive 2019, and we run LaTeX Make just like we would do on Overleaf. At the end, we record whether or not the compilation succeeded without errors and how long it took. We also do the same thing with the previous year's image, in this case it's TechLive 2018, so that we have an idea of what changed. Fortunately, this process is automated. Uh, currently, it runs on my laptop and usually takes around one day to complete. If we wanted to do that more quickly, we could run as many tests as we want in parallel, but for now, running them one at a time is fine. After all templates have been tested, we split them into four categories uh, that we can see in this table. Most templates usually compile without errors with both images, and we'll call them successful. Uh, some templates ran successfully the previous year, but have errors with the new image, and we'll call them newly broken. Other templates were already broken the previous year and still have errors with the new image. Uh, we'll call them already broken. And finally, some rare templates were broken the previous year and now compile without errors. Uh, we'll call them fixed. Now, all these results are compiled in a spreadsheet and it's time for our tech experts, Yancey, Tom, Paul, and Dan, to have a look at the problematic templates to figure out what's going on. Of course, they are mostly interested in the newly broken templates. The problems they find are sometimes bugs in tech packages that we can report or for which we can find workarounds. Sometimes they are due to backwards incompatible changes in a package. 
In that case, the template needs to be updated to work with the new TechLive release. If it's a template that we have published, we can update it, but if it's a user-contributed template, we must wait for the original author to update their template. That's not as big a problem as it sounds like, we'll see why later. We're also interested in successful templates that have become significantly slower to compile from one release to the next. Figuring out why the template is so much slower to compile can sometimes point to some interesting changes that occurred in TechLive or in specific packages. It can also suggest some optimizations we can apply to the image that will speed up compilations. For the same reasons, it's even interesting to look at templates that are significantly faster to compile. We could find some surprising things in there. We also plot compile times on graphs to get a sense of the distribution of changes from one year to the next. This is useful to get an idea whether our new image is generally slower than the previous one and to identify weird outliers. When we're satisfied that the image is ready to go, we upload it to our compile servers. From this moment on, new projects will be compiled with the new TechLive version. However, existing projects are still compiled with the previous version or whatever version they were compiled with before. This is because if we change the version used to compile a project, there's a chance the project will render differently or will just not compile because of incompatibilities between TechLive versions. For that reason, as you can see in that screenshot of the project settings, Every project in Overleaf remembers the version it's compiled with, and this version only changes if the user deliberately asks for it. So if I started a project now, it would compile with TechLive 2019 because we haven't released the 2020 version yet. And even after TechLive 2020 is released, my project would still compile with TechLive 2019. However, any new project I create after that would compile with TechLive 2020. The same is true for templates. Templates remember which version they compile with and new projects created from these templates will use the same version. So when we release a new version, we also upgrade the templates to use the new version, but only templates that compiled successfully. The templates that failed with the new version keep running with the previous version. That's why I said before that broken templates are not too big of a deal. So that's nice. We have released our new image. Hopefully no one has noticed and users will start using the new features in the new TechLive release without even realizing that something changed in Overleaf. But it's good to celebrate a little, so we publish a blog post. It's also an occasion to write release notes detailing everything we've learned about the new release during our tests. This includes new features, known bugs, and workarounds. After that, there's not much to do. We've seen how careful we are not to automatically upgrade projects to the latest TechLive version, but packages on CTAN change all the time and any change in a package could break some projects. So how do we deal with this? It's actually quite simple. We just don't update CTAN packages. We actually don't update anything in the image. Not tech packages, not Ubuntu packages, not R packages. After it's released, we freeze the compiler image so that we can guarantee as much as possible that your article or thesis or even book that was compiling yesterday still compiles today and produces the exact same result. There are exceptions and some updates are sometimes applied, but only when they fix a bug for our users. When that happens, we apply the smallest possible update that fixes the bug. This all means that the TechLive 2019 environment in Overleaf today is a snapshot of the Ubuntu packages, CTAN packages, and R packages that were available at the time the 2019 image was built. You won't get new features with this image, but you can rely on its stability. It will always compile your project the same way. If you want new features, you can wait for the 2020 release and upgrade your project or if there's a specific package version you're interested in, you can upload it directly to your project. If it's put in the right place, LaTeX will use your version instead of the version provided by Overleaf. So this is how TechLive releases are made available on Overleaf. We plan to do that process every summer because it's a bit after the actual TechLive release and there's a bit less activity on Overleaf. 
This process, if, even if it's quite simple, already works quite well. We're able to catch most problems before the release. Still, every year we try to improve it a little. Uh, one thing we could do is find other documents outside the template gallery to run in, your, in our uh, benchmarks. It would also be interesting to see if we could run our benchmarks during the tech live pretests to help finding bugs. And finally, we noticed that compilation seems to get slightly slower every year. It would be interesting to figure out more precisely where the time is spent. So uh, that's all I have. I'll be happy to answer any questions now. So that's it. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I can uh, answer any questions. There are no questions, I think, now in the chat or in the Q&A. I have some questions. If I, yes. I, since I'm allowed to talk, I just ask you directly instead of typing. Thanks a lot for this very interesting talk. Uh, Noel Biden from the Tech Life team here. So you are, um, I, I really like the testing you are doing uh, for the stuff. I'm I'm working since long on something like a continuous integration testing that is really based only on. Uh, plain compiler PDP. So I have two questions. First, do you do actually only check that you compile a template or do you also check on some uh, congruence between the previous and the new versions PDF output? Uh, yes, yeah, so, so well, the, uh, so we, we only check if, uh, if, we, if, if the two projects compile. So we have some, we have tried that uh, looking at like visual differences. Um, uh, and, and try to do it in an automated way, but it, there's a, there, so, so I, I've done it in 2018, uh, but it, it turns up a lot of, uh, of, uh, of different results because uh, some packages will just like change the spacing slightly between things and yeah. it's gonna, it's gonna th like in a, in a document with a lot of pages, it's gonna, like throw away the so it, the, the so so just like comparing the images is is yeah it, it just it's not super effective yeah um so yeah so but so at the moment we only uh look at basically i'm running the same thing that runs in production and uh look at the if, if there if there are errors or not on, on both yeah. sides yeah yeah and the second question, since there is no question in the chat or in the QA, I ask. So I'm very interested in the, in, in the suggestion you mentioned at the end, because I, I thought about this before even you mentioned it, uh, running your tests uh, during the pre-test phase. So I think we should catch up on this, I mean, afterwards via email or something, mm -hmm. um, because that would be very interesting for us too, that to, to get some, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, I mean, whatever, do whatever is necessary to support you in this. Uh, we can run it also on my own computer, whatever. Um, I, I would like to get more testing during the pre-test phase uh, since we had over the years many times released uh, a, a new version and had to update stuff very shortly afterwards. And so I, I hope that we can get into contact afterwards about this still pre-test uh, testing. That would be something that I would be interested to hear. Yeah, yeah, that, that would be interesting. I, yeah, I added, I added it in my slide because it's something we thought about, something we thought about uh, this year, but like with things coming, coming yeah. in, uh, we, we didn't have time to uh, figure it out. But uh, yeah, that would be uh, very interesting indeed. Eric, we have uh, you have a couple of entries yeah. in the Q and A. Uh, yes, so why not? So Jeremy asks, why not offer? It? Oh, it, it disappeared. I, it disappeared. I scroll up and down. That window uh, adds from the bottom and scrolls. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, I have a. So the question is, why not offer a, a still in development image like in Debian that would follow the daily upgrades of tech life? The users would be in charge of most of the testing work. It could be frozen at the end of the year and when the next release appears. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting. So um, yeah, that, that's, an, that's an interesting thing to think about. Uh, there are some, uh, some Technical, maybe, yeah, I don't know if there's, there are so many technical difficulties with that. Uh, uh, but yeah, so, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's something, let's say, let's say I'll, I'll, I'll take a note of it 
it's, it's an idea I think we didn't pursue so much because uh, like stability is easier. <laughs> it's just easier on everyone. Uh, maybe having it as, as a, as a um, opt-in thing uh, would be an interesting service. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll take a note of that. So, so I, if I understand correctly, that would be having a kind of moving, uh, moving image that just tracks yes yes yeah. i understand this also that you have an image that is like updated once a day or i don't know once a week or whatever with yeah. uh the latest update uh, like a rolling release more or less so that uh, i agree with jeremy that this is an interesting point yeah i think yeah techni technically uh, it's, it's not a i think it's not a big deal it's more uh, it's more into like maintenance support yeah. uh that's more difficult yeah, well i mean i can add a point maybe to this thing I mean, I'm for the overleaf support and I already see how many issues we get with, you know, and every new image, like every year, it's yeah. two or three months with increased number of questions about, hey, this doesn't work. And if I make a copy of my project, it doesn't work because there is the original project is 2019 or even 2016 sometimes. The new project is 2020. And, you know, so anything that sort of makes the site less stable is much more work for us. And it's much more confusing for our users in general. And the experience is that many people who do need completely new packages know what they do and they have a local copy of Tech Life anyway. So sort of the type of users that would benefit from this a lot are the users that can do it other way. So basically that's maybe the point. Mm. Yeah. Okay, there was another question. I don't really see it from David Carslight. Oh, I Similar see, I can see it. Oh. Ah, okay. Yeah, so similar to TL pretest, uh, it may be interesting to test with the LaTeX dev releases. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, so this is something we will, we'll, uh, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to look at for sure. Uh, Alan uh, Wetmore asks if I have a long running project, is there a way for me to request an update to the current version of Tech Live so it won't be trapped in legacy forever? My project could then use new capabilities. So yes, uh, there. So this is something that uh, uh, this is a feature we added this uh, well last year, and you can now in the project settings you can select uh, the the tech live version. So it's uh, so yeah that's so so now you can you can manually upgrade. We just won't upgrade it for you uh, so that it, you don't get any surprises. Um, Paolo uh, asks, how many servers does the company have? The question, uh, I, um, so they, I think the compile server, so just for compiling, uh, I think the, the number is around like, around 50-ish, uh, I, I don't remember the exact count, but that's the, uh, uh, and of course, like all these, uh, all these servers uh, compile a lot of projects at the same time. Yeah, there's a lot of compiling going on. Um, yes, I think that's it. Did, did I did I answer everything? And, and was it one more question? Yeah. Um, is are there any stat statistics about which Tech Life version is used by how many projects, oh, and how this is distributed? Oh yeah, right. Uh, I didn't think to. Uh, I didn't think to to uh, to to uh, to get that already. So, so well for for now. So I I really don't know. Uh, I would like my guess is that uh, people like people don't upgrade manually. So it it would be just uh, it's probably a uh, like <laughs> it's probably like the number of projects that have been uh, that have been. Um, Created when, when the tech live version was the was the default. Uh, we've been on 2017 for a while, so I would suppose that a lot of, a lot of projects from tech live 2017. But I guess that actively developed projects are probably running uh, 2019 now. Thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Eric. Uh, we have a short intermission now. And we're going to be back at 6.45 um, with Yuan Tournad. And uh, you're welcome to continue the discussion on the chat, on the Q&A. And Eric, please stick around. Sure, sure. And, uh, and thanks a lot for the conference. It's my first uh, 
it's first tug and I really appreciate it. Uh, I learned a lot of, a lot of things and, uh, and yeah, it's a great, Thank you. great conference. You, you are what makes, makes that great. <laughs>